Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Today I Found Out. And in the video today, the man who captured four armed German soldiers with an empty gun. Very little is actually known about Lance Corporal James Welch prior to his actions during World War I. However, we do know some very basic details about him. According to Welch's grave in Bournemouth Crematorium, he was born in 1889 on July 7th in the small English village of Stratfield Say. Well, Welch must have had a very boring childhood because quite literally the very next thing recorded about his life was that he joined the Royal Berkshire Regiment. After signing up, Welch was drafted to the 1st Battalion of the RBR, where he quickly attained the rank of Lance Corporal. Once again, at this point, the records of Welch's boring activities disappear into obscurity. That is, until he won a Victoria Cross on April 29, 1917, in France. According to Welch's Victoria Cross citation, he and his unit were advancing on a strong German defensive line in Oppie during the Battle of Arras, when, for reasons that aren't documented, Welch broke off from his unit and leapt into a nearby German trench, where he came face to face with an astonished German soldier. Unfortunately, Welsh had only an unloaded service revolver on hands when he leapt into the trench, which was fairly bad news for the German soldier. Welch brutally dispatched this German soldier using nothing but his bare hands and apparently terrifying man strength. But Welch, he was not done being an unthinkable badass just yet, because hiding in the same trench were four other fully armed German soldiers just itching to avenge their fallen comrade. So, as I mentioned just a moment ago, Welch only had a service revolver with no bullets in it to protect himself, which is something you absolutely wouldn't want to bum rush four armed sworn enemies with in the midst of a battle. However, you are not Welch because that is exactly what he did. Well, rather amazingly, the four German soldiers, rather than simply machine gunning Welch to death the second he ran towards them, they ran for their lives across open ground, once again, reality echoing Pliny the Elder's famed words shortly before his death Fortune favors the brave. So, Welch, rather than you know, counting his blessings as the Germans fled, he decided to tear after the men. Again, remember here, he was armed with nothing but an empty revolver. Now, at any point, any of these Germans could have just turned around and shot him in the face with little consequence, but of course, they didn't know that his gun wasn't loaded. Indeed, he chased them down and he then captured them. Unfortunately, Welch's Victoria Cross citation doesn't actually mention how he managed to complete the capture of the four soldiers without incident, which is incredibly disappointing. All that is known is simply he chased them for a a while and then they surrendered to him. After capturing the soldiers, Welch spent the next five hours defending his position with a machine gun. The citation it doesn't make clear where Welch managed to procure the machine gun, but one would think he perhaps stole it from one of his German captives. So wherever he got this machine gun, well, Welch managed to put it to amazingly good use. Not only did he defend himself against an entire force with little more than a machine gun for five straight hours, but on more than one occasion during the firefight, he ran into open ground while under fire to scavenge for equipment. After sustaining injury and later receiving the Victoria Cross, Welch managed to attain the rank of sergeant before the war came to an end. As for what happened to Welch after the end of the First World War, Gerald Glidden, the author of a series of books on recipients of the Victoria Cross, reports that Welch worked in a box factory in Sheffield until around 1960. He only took a break from this work in World War II when he joined the Royal Air Force Auxiliary Reserve. After 1960, Welch then returned to Bournemouth with his wife Daisy, whom he had married in 1915. He later died at the age of 88, and we're assuming at that point he decided to have a fist fight with the Grim Reaper. Now for a bonus fact. Pliny the Elder, the famed author, naturalist, philosopher, and commander, died trying to rescue people stranded on the shores after the eruption of Mount Vesuvius, which destroyed Pompeii. While attempting to sail his ship to the shore, burning cinders fell on the ship. Rather than turning the boat around, as his helmsman had actually suggested, Pliny the Younger claimed that Pliny the Elder stated the Latin proverb, fortune favors the brave, steer to where Pompeius is. He landed safely and was able to rescue his friends and others on the shore. However, he never left that shore. Unfortunately, before they could set out again, they needed for the winds to shift, he died and ended up being left behind. It is thought he died of some sort of asthmatic attack or by some cardiovascular event, possibly brought on by the heavy fumes and the heat from the volcano's eruption. His body was retrieved three days later. He was 56 years old. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Do not forget to subscribe. Brand new videos just like this every day of the week. Also, some videos from the archives over there on the right. You'll probably enjoy those if you enjoyed this one. And as always, thanks for watching.